Hello, my name is Kate Redshaw and I'm a senior employment lawyer in the uh, employment team at Burgess Salmon. And I'm here to talk to one of our partners, Luke Barry, about flexible furloughing. So Luke, we're specifically going to be talking about the changes that are happening to the furlough scheme from the 1st of July. And um, of course, last Friday, we saw um, the Treasury direction. That was, uh, that's the document which sets out the legal parameters of the scheme. That's been outdated. We had the guidance that was outdated on the 12th of June. So I think we've probably got everything for now we're going to get from HMRC. But let's start, Luke, with what flexible furloughing actually means. Yeah, hi, Kate. Well, as you know, under the current scheme, an employee on furlough must do no work at all for their employer. That's been a key part of the scheme. From July, under the flexible furlough arrangements, employers will be able to bring employees back for any amount of time and any shift pattern, while still claiming furlough pay for the usual hours that employee isn't working. I think one of the gripes about the current scheme has been its lack of flexibility. So this change should hopefully help employers as they gradually scale up their operations as the lockdown continues to ease. Okay, so does that mean an employer can ask any employee to work under a, a flexible furlough arrangement? Uh, no, not quite as simple as that. Um, employees to be eligible are going to have to have been furloughed for a minimum three week period uh, before 30th of June. So what that means with limited exceptions, for example, those returning from a period of family leave, is that if you haven't been furloughed by 10th of June, you're not going to be eligible to be furloughed from July onwards. One other point to note, I think, is also that the total number of employees you can furlough in any claim period from 1st of July must not exceed the maximum number of employees you might have furloughed in any claim period up to 30th of June. Okay, okay, I see. And does that mean then from 1st of July, an employer has to move all of their employees to flexible furloughs? So if I've got some people I just want to carry on being off kind of on a full-time basis, is that still going to be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, still perfectly entitled to keep employees on full furlough. And for those operations which are going to remain closed, that's going to be very important to do. From 1st of July, you're going to have entire choice. You're going to have a range of furlough arrangements. So you could have some employees on full furlough, some on a rotational furlough, and also some on a flexible furlough arrangement. It's going to be up to you in terms of what your business needs require. Okay, so that all sounds uh, very flexible, dare I say it, um, but if I want to take advantage of this new flexibility so I can bring people back, um, what do I have to do? Can I just ring them up and say, can you come in next Monday morning for a bit? Um, I don't think it's quite as easy as that. Um, both the updated guidance and the direction which was published on the 26th of June do make clear that if you're going to put furlough, flexible furlough arrangements in place, you've got to agree those with the employee. The Treasury direction does confirm, however, that that agreement can be confirmed in writing, as opposed to you having to get the agreement itself in writing. Obviously, that's going to be helpful, particularly for employers with large workforces or remote workforces. Okay. And in terms of the pattern, I mean, lots of employers are going to have very different needs. Yeah. Uh, are there any constraints either from the Treasury direction, the guidance, or indeed other constraints, which is going to stop me as the employer deciding what pattern that is? Yeah, good question. Um, in my view, I think you've got to make a distinction between what the furlough scheme says. So employers are able to bring back employees for any amount of time, any shift pattern, any period of furlough against what the overarching employment relationship is between the employer and the employee, probably as governed by their terms and conditions of employment. So if you're looking to make significant changes to an employee's working patterns or working hours, then you're going to have to think about getting consents from the employee in the usual way. Now, for some cases, that's not going to be problematic given the current economics, but for others, that could pose some difficult questions for employers. For example, those employees who've been topped up on full pay um, for existing furlough arrangements, those with ongoing childcare responsibilities, and we know that's going to be the case, of course, and also those employees who might fall into a vulnerable category, having those conversations and getting consent and people back to work, as I say, I think could pose some difficult questions. Yes, because I guess even if you've got the, the contract setting out your hours, if you're still not able to come back to to work because the schools continue to be closed, that is going to be very tricky. Mm. Um, if, if an employee agrees to the new pattern of work, what will they be paid? How's that going to work? 
Okay. Um, well, for their usual hours they're going to work, they should be paid in accordance with their normal terms and conditions of employment, unless, of course, those have been varied by any furlough <laughs> between the employer and the employee. In addition, the employee is still going to be entitled to 80% of their regular wages under the scheme um, for any hours they don't work. So that's obviously subject to the cap. And the cap is 2,500 for an employee on full-time furlough. And from 1st of July, that's going to be reduced proportionately to reflect any hours worked. So if you take a, an example of an employee who says on £2,000 a month, they're being asked to work 50% of their usual hours. Um, they'd be entitled to £1,000 from their employer, subject to deductions, of course, and then 80% of the remaining 1000 so in crude terms, £800 under the furlough scheme. Okay. And then what is the employer can I claim back from the government? Okay. Well, in July, it's going to be as per now. So that £800 plus employer mix and the minimum pension contributions. Obviously, that's going to be scaled back through August, September and October as the scheme winds down to the end of October. Important point to note, though, is as that scheme scales back, the employee is still going to be entitled to the 80% of their regular wage figure. OK, and in the example we just discussed, we used uh, deliberately easy figures. But obviously, most arrangements are going to be more complicated than that. For example, if I'm employed, say, five days a week and come back and work three mornings a week, how, how's that calculation going to work? Yeah, good, good luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, you, you're right. It, it's not easy. Um, the guidance and now the Treasury direction set out detailed formulae for calculating usual hours worked. Um, and whether you're on variable hours, fixed hours, etc. Um, helpfully, they've also published a number of worked examples taking you through those calculations. But I think it's safe to say they're not for the faint hearted. Um, you're going to need a cold towel and probably the extensive help of your payroll team. So from what you've outlined, and I had the joy of looking at the Treasury direction over the weekend, um, it seems that flexible furloughing might not be the panacea that employers, we know employers really wanted this, but is it is it possibly not the panacea they might have been hoping for? Um, I think maybe that's a little unfair. Um, for employers wanting to bring back employees to do some work, this is going to be a help. And as you say, it's what lots of industry bodies were lobbying for and have been for some time. But I think the devil is going to be in the detail. I think it's fair to say that some employers have felt that calculating and making claims under the existing scheme has been reasonably complicated. That's only going to get worse from July onwards, of course. I think with that in mind, it's really important for employers just to take a step back and really think about what their resourcing requirements are going to be over the coming months before they embark on a detailed furlough, flexible furlough arrangement. In practice, I think what that's going to mean is that we'll see employers, as I've said earlier, using a range of furlough arrangements. So I think we'll see people on full furlough. I think we'll see people on rotational furlough and then maybe a mix of flexible furlough. I think the other important thing is if you are going to use flexible furlough arrangements, it's going to be beneficial um, to keep those arrangements as simple as possible to aid and ease the claims and the calculation process. Okay, we have to leave it there, Luke, but thank you very much. Lots of food for thought, for thought there. Um, and if you'd like to know more about the Flexible Furlough Scheme, you can find our guidance notes and many more resources for employers by visiting Burgess Salmon's COVID-19 hub on our website. Thank you for watching.